what a mess. What a mess. It's a car crash. I mean, it's, it's just been, I have to say, and I thought that nearly losing my life was the worst part point of my life. I, have to, I think this year has been the worst year I've ever had in my life. Mm. Mm. Uh, you know, to lo just losing one thing after another after another. So was it, was it, let's go back to, um, to that interview in August. Was that the right thing to do, do you think, to, to talk about it, to be open about it? Yeah, 100%. Yep. I always think if you mess up, it's the best way is to put your hands up and say, I've, I've done wrong. There's no point keep sweeping things under the carpet and like not looking over your shoulder, pretending it didn't happen. You have to face things full frontal well, and you, just go for it. You mm. dealt with those issues there, and, and, and the whole drug issue was very well documented. I don't think there's any yeah, and, I, and the national paper sent me over to the States and looked after me out there and made sure I had all the right you know, meetings and, mm. and doctors and things. So what happened when you got back? I got back... Um, and a friend was lending me somewhere to stay and, and unfortunately they lost that house. Um, so I found myself with nowhere to live. And I've got some very good friends actually through my daughter's, daughter's friends, their parents, um, have lent me places to stay and we stayed at a few different people's houses and things. It just is such an awful place to be. Um, and then I've had two of my friends that have lost their homes this year, it's gone into sheltered accommodation, put me onto my local council and they got us in somewhere within two weeks in a, in sheltered accommodation, which is like a bed sit, which is where we are now. Has being so public about this um, affected you getting work? Um, I've lost all my work. I was supposed to be in, um, in Torquay this Christmas in Panto, and as soon as I got exposed, the, the theatre called and said, no, we can't possibly have her at our theatre. Um, and other work that I've, I, I had lined up, I've just phoned and said, no, we can't do that. Because you're a risk? It was because I've relapsed, yeah. Mm. So one thing after another, and then obviously because I didn't have any work and the work that I had lined up, money-wise, you know, I couldn't go and rent anywhere privately or do anything because I had no funds. No. And I know you're also not taking any benefits. So how are you, how are you coping financially? Um, well, I get a, a, a small amount of money every few weeks from my daughter's dad for her, and that's it really. And I've been really very lucky with friends of mine, I've been, I've been blessed with friends of mine have done like, surprised me with like a, a food delivery to the house or things like that to help us out. I have been to food banks this year because we haven't been able to add any money. Um, yeah, it's, it's been very difficult. But a few friends have, have, have pulled together. One of, one of my friends has lent me a little car to drive and you know, my, my producer from my film, Terry Coker, he lent me a car to drive about so I've got to get the kids to school and stuff. So. Oh, should we go on the road? <laughs> well, that could be next year's Tech Santa challenge. <laughs> Might be the hardest the thing I've done. <laughs> so, is that is because of the the military in you that mm. likes that sort of bunking down and getting on with it and small beds?